Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here on YouTube. And today I'm working with Hebrews 619. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And I have created for myself a sketch and I'm going to trace this into my Bible. You can pick up that JPEG by using the link in the description if you want, or go over to my Bible Journaling Made Simple website to nab that one or any of the other sketches that I have available. So I'm tracing this on here, and the reason I'm doing an anchor today is that for the World Watercolor Month Challenge, the prompt for today is deep, and something like an anchor seemed like it would be nice and deep, so I'm going to put it under the water and create a background for it. Now I know a lot of people just do a picture in the side, they would paint maybe just the anchor and do the text. I love to have color on my pages. You might have noticed that if you've watched much of my YouTubing, but I do love to have lots and lots of color because as I flip through my Bibles, that stops my eye and I really like that a lot. And in using watercolor, you can use it nice and transparent like this, especially if you're using transparent kinds of watercolors. There are some that are a little more chalky, a little more like a gouache um, or a thin acrylic than they are like a watercolor. But these are Daniel Smith paints, which I can highly recommend because they work really well. And I put the color down and I want to have darker color on one section, but I wanted to get this first part set first. And I'm using a baby wipe to kind of smooth out some places where there might have been heavier pigment. And then I'll put another coat over here on the right hand side because I wanted to put some lettering up in that empty space above the anchor, but I wanted it to be dark enough that I could see a white pen. You could also leave it light enough so you can write the text in a dark pen. But if you leave it somewhere in the middle, it's hard to find something that's going to work as far as doing your any kind of lettering in there. So I try to think ahead a little bit about what kind of lettering that I want and where I want to place it so I have enough color behind it to work with whatever the pen's going to be. <clears throat> the challenge then comes with how do you stop that color and make it so that you can keep the text readable on the left. And I do that by just putting a little bit of color there, blending it out by dabbing some off with a baby wipe so I get a relatively smooth transition out that way. This anchor has some really interesting shapes that I also want to emphasize and putting the dark color around there is going to allow me to do some of what's called negative painting. So I'm painting around the object itself, putting lots of rich dark color around there so those shapes are going to stand out really nicely in my finished piece. And again I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put just a little bit of color along the side and then blend it out so that I just have that little edge that's going to be darker color. And of course, watercolor is going to dry lighter than it's going on right now as well. So the words are going to be very readable on here. So I'm going to add some color now into the metal part of the, the anchor. And I'm leaving a highlight on it. And it's a little hard to tell because you're also seeing the highlights on the wrinkles in the paper. But I'm leaving a highlight on the right hand side and the upper side of each one of the shapes. So that way when I have my finished painting, I'm going to have some highlight on it and it's going to make it stand out more and look a little bit more dimensional. I've mixed this using some black paint that was kind of watered down and then I'm going in with some heavier pigment and adding more on the left and bottom side of everything. So that's going to give me a little bit of that transition. Since the paint is wet, it's going to blend together with what was already there, but it gives me the opportunity to create a little bit of depth by having shadows on one side and highlights on the side facing the light. And then it was a matter of figuring out what I wanted to do with the rest of it. So I wanted a little color in the the string or the, the rope that goes <laughs> string. If you could tie a, an anchor with a piece of string, that would probably not be a very good anchor, would it? So the, the rope and the banner are going to be in the same kind of brown colors. Hello puppies. They're outside wrestling. I will apologize ahead of time for them because they're feeling their oats today. It's a cool day. Anyway, I'm putting darker color on the back side of the banner where it flips around to the, the back end behind it and lighter color in the front. And you can tell that pushes those shapes to the back a little bit more so that they look like they're going behind the anchor and the front parts are lighter so they're hanging out in the front. I did iron it in between, and you can do this at any stage that you want to. I ironed it because I wanted to have a little flatter surface to play with. 
because sometimes when the paper gets too crinkly, it's just hard to paint on. And I do that by just taking a hot iron, putting a piece of paper over top of it, and iron over it really quickly. If you have any pigment on it that's like gel pen or acrylic, then know that your paper will stick to it if you put something over top of it and heat it. So you don't want to melt anything. But with watercolor, you can do that quite nicely. It'll never make the paper perfectly smooth, but it does it good enough to, uh, to work really well for these watercolor illustrations. So I'm adding more dark color because I thought that would be even nicer to add more depth to the right hand side. And you can keep adding layers and layers and layers until you get it practically black over there if you want. But I just wanted it dark enough that it was going to work because I want to have that white pen in there. So now I'm going to use my black Micron pen. And one of the things that I like to do is do my outlining after I get the painting done because that way I can clean up some edges if there's some places where it didn't work quite well. And I don't have to worry about painting right up to a very thin edge because it's sometimes hard to get your brush under control enough that you get that really crisp line right beside it. But when I go over top of it afterward, I can adjust that, I can fix it, that sort of thing. And I am known for needing to fix things. Nothing ever comes out quite perfect. But again, you may also notice in my Bible journaling, I don't worry about perfection either. Some people want to get out rulers and measure everything and draw it out carefully first. I'm really not that way. I like that hand created look and God loves my mistakes because he loves me. So I'm not really stressing out about any of the places where I may have made errors that I would wish that I hadn't. So in the areas that are sh in the shadows, like the parts that go out, out behind, I'm just adding some scribbled lines, trying to keep them roughly at the same angle as each other, adding a little bit onto my anchor so I can emphasize those shadows just a little tiny bit. And then I'll put some lettering right onto the, um, the banner itself. I realized when I was looking at this video that I used a multi-liner instead of my Micron pen for this because it was sitting on the table and it did not go through terribly, but it did go through a little bit. So don't use multi-liners when you're doing your, <laughs> your lettering in your Bible. Not the best thing. That's a pen that works with, well with Copic markers, but the, the Micron pens work much better. So I put a little bit of dots in the sand. There's space in the sand down there that I'm gonna add some personal journaling after I get this video all finished. So I can add more down there. And now I wanted to have my lettering up at the top section. So I wanted the word Jesus to stand out the most. Jesus is my anchor. And then I also wanted words above it. And I'm starting it a little bit behind that rope. So it almost looks like the rope is going in front. And even that part of the word Jesus, the, the J goes behind the anchor as well. And since I didn't plan very well, I realized the hope in looks like hopin or hopain or something. So I thought, well, while I'm putting my bubbles on here, I'll think about how to fix that so that it reads as hope in instead of hopain. Because <laughs> sometimes we just don't plan very well, right? And I thought, well, what if I make the word hope and the word Jesus a little bit bolder than the word in? And then that might create some contrast between the weight of the letters. And so I'm going over each one of the letters using my Signo gel pen. You can use whatever white gel pen works for you. For some people, this pen doesn't work very well. But I did have another conversation with somebody when I gave her the advice to press less hard with the pen don't push as hard because the roller ball at the top at the end needs to have that ink go around it. So you need to not press really hard. And she said that worked well. So if you're having trouble, try just not pressing really, really hard with your pen. And that's about it for today's page. I hope I will see you out there on social media. And if not, I will see you next week right here on the channel for another video. God bless you. Bye-bye.